All right, welcome back to the film room here at sonsofmontezuma.com. It's Mateo San Diego, and once again, I'm joined with Coach Carrasco, Coach C. How's it going, man? I'm fired up over another big dub by our Aztecs, and uh, it's good to be a Pac-12 team. And um, it's a lot of fun when you're going on a Sunday looking at film and just getting stretches in after a big W like that. Now that's two wins in a row over a Pac-12 team. Like we said, the Aztecs beat the University of Utah 33-31 to in a triple overtime game. It was one of the crazier games I've ever been to live in person. And I've been to a lot of Aztec games, so that's saying something. Okay, so talking about defenses, going back and keeping it on those lines. In this game against Utah, our own version of the dark side defense looks like they're kind of uh, taking form because you talk about tackles for losses. This defense was playing out of their mind. We mentioned it on the podcast, the Sons of Montezuma podcast. You can check it out now. We mentioned how how awesome they were just playing, full throttle. So that first half was something that uh, was, was really impressive. Well, we're going to look at basically with the defense doing their thing, all the TFLs that they had in the first half, tackle for losses, playing their game, really controlling the tempo, not letting Utah find a rhythm at all, um, really causing problems. That McDonald guy, he is something else. He sets the edge. But not only does he set the edge, he really sets the tone for the whole defense. You know, that there's a there's something going on with him that – He's out of he's in high gear all the time. And it's almost like you get the sense that that whole defense better be in fifth gear like he is in constantly. You know, there was a point in the game where, you know, guys were getting tired and he's still in. He's dropping in coverage. He's rushing the quarterback. And I'm like, this guy, you know, he reminds me of Mad Max there for the Raiders and all that just constant motor that just keeps going. Really not going to go over that first half as far as the defense on film, other than we expected them to be the swarming defense that they are handling assignment football. But what we will go over, what in the world changed? Our defense looks like world beaters, has everything under control. And we see this in football at every level. You know, what in the world changes? And why is it all of a sudden when teams start going no huddle and, and uh, you know, that defense is – you know, you hear fans complain, why are they in prevent? Why aren't they doing what they were doing before? Well, a lot of times they are doing what they were doing before. But that other team on that other side, they're smart too. And sometimes they figure things out. And you got to give them a little bit of credit. And that's one thing that we saw here. You still see the same kind of front by this defense here. They're still running their, you know, an over front. They run a 3-3 stack. But, you know, you got your four-man front. Here's McDonald just stepping up as your linebacker. You know, they still got their same kind of, scheme eyes on the ball they know what they're doing and you know they're going to drop and do their job they're going to get a little pressure you get the pressure on the quarterback so they bust up the pocket like normal Mm -hmm. but then there's a new element that's now been introduced to this ball game and it's a quarterback that can do this and he makes a little move you know and it was kind of like a mistake block you know just but he took advantage of it he set it up nicely you know and it wasn't a bad angle it was just nice move give him credit and before you know it you're inside the 10 yard line and you got a defense that says, Oh, okay. Now we got to put this in our mindset that we got a guy here that um, we got to keep an eye on. And so that whole thing can really stretch as we talked last week, how do you stretch out a good defense? Well, you got to stretch them out horizontally as much as you stretch them out vertically, but then you got a wild card here of a guy that can, He's just a wild card in the respects that, you know, he's going to make you have to say, do I sit in my zone or do I come up and do I leave my guy I'm supposed to cover or do I come up and get him? And so he started making plays like this. And I'm going to fast forward just a little bit here to that first touchdown drive because they didn't score here. I mean, if we continue to go through this drive and I'm not going to do it, yeah, but it'd be a big play here, but the defense stops them from scoring. I sure like this kid arising, by the way. Good. <laughs> I'm telling you what, man, he's a lot of fun and all. But now Utah is in a situation here where there's six minutes left to go, right? You got this guy. Oh, boy. All right, guys, can we hold on? Can we do this? All right, defense, you know. And there's something that happens when a team starts going no huddle. Well, we got to understand the state of Utah. There's a state of desperation they're in. 
right? They're, and they're also thinking four downs now. Okay? Right. So they don't have to be perfect on first down anymore. Now they're thinking we're going to be going on four downs anyways. So let's just let it rip. And so, and then also there's a lot less thinking for a quarterback. First guy he sees open, he's getting rid of it. In addition to this, it keeps a defense honest where they got to just stay base because now this coaching staff on the sideline of San Diego State, they got to communicate faster. The OC on their side, he also has had a full football game now to kind of figure out certain things. It's not that San Diego State does anything different. Rising here, they're going to come, they're going to set up a four-man front, but you're going to watch his eyes that he starts figuring out here. And I'll go over the positions again for those that are watching. Here's our two corners here. All right. Got a linebacker that's walked up. It's still a 3-3 stack, but now he walks up to set up what we call an over front, just a four-man front for the basic terminology here. And then there's your other two linebackers here. Mike here, that guy would be the Sam. Here's a wheel. But this guy's a nickel. I call him a nickel. This guy's a dime. And here's our free safety. And so you're going to see rising here. He's going to just take his three steps, hitch it, all right? And he recognizes from pre-snap that that slot receiver, that that dime back, if you will, you know, the dime is going to go with him. And there's going to be no underneath help, you know? And he delivers a good ball and gets yourself 15. And that right there is huge on a no huddle. You know, an early win, an early big play, you know, an early aim mover, right? Okay, now we're in it. Here we go. Blood's going out. Here we come. And all of a sudden, you got guys here looking to the sideline. What's the call, coach? You got guys lining up, and they're no longer communicating with one another and thinking, what exotic thing do you want us to bring, coach? They're just trying to get make sure they're in their right location now. So their mindset's changed. Can we get to the right spot? And there they are in a two-by-two formation. Again, quarterback is understood. Now, here's the read that I want to – kind of go older. What has the quarterback made easy for himself? Not only has he kind of come to an idea of what these two guys are doing, but these two inside guys as well. And that is you see him playing really soft right now, but they've done that before in the game. That's nothing big or whatever else. But this rising guy recognizes that if they stay soft or if this guy stays soft, it will dictate what he has to do. In other words, if I see this guy start backpedaling, all right, then this linebacker, I call him the Mike. I will call this guy the Sam. Some people call him the Joker because he's on the line of scrimmage. But again, talking in 3-3 stack. And I don't know what San Diego State's terminology, what names they give. I'm just sure Coach Carrasco, what I used to call these guys. But I know that this Mike, I'm going to call him the Mike. If this dime ends up backing up, because this is the free safety, that's the nickel, he's going to have to overextend here to cover. Somebody's got to cover that slot. Or the joker here or the sign backer, he's going to have to drop. So there's little things that they started keying on that they understood. And so once this quarterback started realizing, all right, I'm getting what I'm thinking I'm going to get, he starts seeing this soft action where these linebackers really start opening up. And what starts happening is passing lanes, real estate areas start coming available right away in his vision. So he found something that makes his reads a little bit easier. He feels with his feet, he can manipulate a pocket. Here's a win by McDonald here. But he feels like I can, it's all right if you get beat, just make sure you stick with them because I'm going to make the adjustment and climb that pocket real quick. I don't Mm -hmm. care if that's a win. And let me just take advantage of the soft zone that's been vacated just to keep the pressure on this defense that we're on top of you. We're getting that first line yardstick to move forward, not no game. We're just moving it forward. All right. So boom, two good plays in a row as far as two positives in a row. But the key is the OC and that quarterback started saying, all right, I'm going to simplify these reads for myself here. San Diego State was still playing great defense, but now they're a little tired. Now you got a quarterback that's kind of like, okay, I think I've kind of figured certain things out. Not everything, just enough things just to start at least being competitive, just enough to put myself in a situation where I have a shot here, all right? Here comes another pressure. And again, I told you that those two inside linebackers, the quarterbacks were really getting, or rising, he was getting a lot of his keys from. Well, now look where they're located at. Now there's nobody there because now they're mugging their line of scrimmage out. Here they're coming up. And if they bring pressure, Okay, there's a lot of real estate here that I can take advantage of. And because of his running ability, 
He's not going to have happy feet. He's not going to try to make a throw too soon. He knows he can buy time. And again, the pressure coming this way, this guy's playing soft. So it really tells me a lot of who might drop. And sure enough, McDonald drops this time. Okay. Quarterback's not worried about it. Buying himself time, stays calm. And because of this vacated area, because of the linebackers, nothing wrong with the call by the defense. It's a great job. You just got a quarterback that's feeling a little bit more comfortable now of seeing things, you know, and you got yourself a big time 15 yard game and Utah's figured out something, you know, and it's kind of like, all right, now defense, what are we supposed to do with all that? Well, when you're going, no, hurry up like they're doing and you got a defense who's just rushing to just get to the correct starting points. The last thing they're looking for right now is some kind of, exotic pressure or an exotic pressure i mean uh, exotic coverage excuse me you know they just want to get to their spots but utah they're standing two by two they're just giving it a different two by two look right sometimes it's spread out and twins sometimes it's in this gemini look that i call it you know where you kind of stacked here a little bit and again making the reads for the quarterback easy snapping the ball on first sound they're running what I call a double stick, where you got a guy running to the flat right away, quick stick route by these guys, where the quarterback can just make a read and get rid of it right now, you know? And it's just a consistent pressure. And we get a tackle. It's like, okay, that's not a bad play by the defense, considering they did their job. Okay, you got two yards on us. But it's the feeling that you're getting. Fans are yeah, getting yeah. antsy. You know, fans are like, come on, get a stop, get a fumble, whatever, get a sack. Well, the guy's getting rid of the ball within a half a second. <laughs> and these guys are tired. And here comes another pressure. So, you know, DC is like, man, I got to, I'm dropping seven. Now I'm bringing seven. And this quarterback is just not thinking no more. He just, I see, you know, a white jersey and throwing it right now, you know. And here comes another pressure. And again, we got to win. Right. That's great pressure. That's a win by the defense there. They dropped them for two yards. Here they win again. You know, defense does a job. These guys are covered. Now, there's a little mistake here by the defense. You can tell they're tired. Got to give Rising some credit. He beats the pressure, and he gets down to the one-and-a-half-yard line. You know, and that's just an animal that you're kind of like, all right, we got to start, you know, considering. But it's tough because it was late in the fourth quarter when it was starting to be utilized. And you're just trying to make these adjustments on the fly, you know. And you're still kind of like just happy at this point that you're up by 14. Here's that Gemini look again. This guy's job in Utah. You see how these guys are stacked here? And so this is telling this guy a lot, but they're going to get a rub action. You're going to get two rubs is what you're going to get. This guy's supposed to rub the guy that's supposed, or this guy's supposed to make sure he gets in his way. And this guy's supposed to get in this guy, whoever's covering him, get in his way. Well, what he is taught, since he sees that his man in the slot, his defender is playing inside, what he wants to do He's, he wants to attack that outside shoulder. He wants to develop some kind of natural barrier as this guy runs a flat route. He kind of does a little bit of too much footwork and all that, but he at least gets to, to the correct shoulder to make this guy have to go around what's going on. This guy just goes and attacks this outside shoulder, and this he does a lot better job, although it could have been flagged, but you're going to see him put his arm up like my guy is wide open and hit him because I just set him up. He's already mm. doing that way. You know, <laughs> I just did my job. I've done the job by getting in his guy's way. You know, he did his job by making this guy go around, which is fine. And this quarterback within a half second, he's throwing it. It's not a big game. Don't need a big game. Guy makes a great tackle. Only gained a yard and a half, but all they needed was a yard and a half. So, mm. Utah starts feeling kind of good for themselves. The OC now, what's going on with the OC at Utah and this quarterback in Utah is like, hey, we kind of figured out some things that we can attack right away. Not that it's going for big yardage, but it's going where it's adding pressure and it's developing a rhythm for this quarterback. So San Diego State playing at a high level. Utah playing at a high level. It's just great matchup between two quality football teams here. You know, great football game. All right, now they go to a three-by-one look. They're going to go ahead and give ourselves a shift look, and it's back to that two-by-two two where you have a chance to give yourself 
some kind of rub action. San Diego State showing pressure here. Are we going to bring it? Are we going to drop? They drop this time. Okay, so they give that look that they're going to drop. And this time, you're going to bring three, and you're going to drop eight. Now, you like San Diego State's odds on that. From the four-yard line, you're dropping eight. That is tough to find. Anybody open. You're sending five out. But look at that mess. Where in the world are you going to find a wide open <laughs> out? The issue is you got to win up front, and they do. But the quarterback uses his legs. But you got two guys that won. They're tired, but they still won. You got guys that are covered all over the place. You even got a guy here. But that back of that end line, which is what we coach offenses to do, when you got yourself a little bit of a scramble, get on the back end line of that end zone and basically hover against it and get in the quarterback's vision. And Rising makes a great play, throws in the back of the end zone, throws a dart. You know, they dropped eight, and he got it. And you're like, ah, you know. But again, quality football team made a quality play. You had defense alignment winning, but they're chasing a rabbit in that pocket who's creating space for himself, and he just bought enough time to to score. Now, this next play, this two-point conversion, is just a mental breakdown. That's all it was, you know, and so – this mental breakdown, again, when you're tired, you're going to have more mental breakdowns. You're going to have missed tackles, you know, and then you're going to have frustration that develops. And you got Coach Hoke and, oh, my, looking at that clock. And he knows, man, if we get a stop, whoo, you know, and all. And there he's just hoping, come on, fellas. But he's also wanting to know what we're made out of. You know, there's a clap. He's just happy right now that these boys have fight in there, right? <laughs> He's just happy that these guys got fight and he's thinking, you know, these guys are whatever, what are we going to do? And it's just a great, great ball game. And now, you know, they feel like, all right, who's going to make the next mistake? I mean, look at all those red jerseys and he sees that in the back, you know, it's just a great play. So get to this two point conversion here. Can San Diego state get that stop? Can Utah? Oh, that, oh we came a long ways for this. Here we go. Brady's going like, come on defense. I know you're in the stands and you're just screaming your head off and let's do this Aztecs. I'm sure. Somewhere in there. What are you thinking right here, Matt? What's your thoughts going on when you're sitting in that stands? I'm thinking they've drove all the way down, but there's no way they're going to score again for the two point conversion. I think there's no way. Touchdown, okay, give them that, but they're not going to make it happen again. So they give a three by one look. And again, we call this a bunch look here. Um, and this bunch look, again, the whole concept with bunch, like you saw with the Gemini formation that I call giving these receivers, putting them in close proximity of each other where you're making the defense have to be aware of all the rubs that can take place, right? And all the kind of barriers that you can do to get in the way of things. And so you got these guys kind of playing leverage, him playing inside heavy leverage, him playing outside leverage. And then you got this guy playing man-to-man -man on what we call the point man. That guy's the point man. And usually what they want to do is they want to jam this guy so he cannot maneuver anywhere and makes these guys pathways to their routes a lot harder because there's just two guys that have been stoned right there. So his job is very important. These guys are playing a leverage where to the point, hey, if this guy comes inside, I'll cover him. This guy goes outside, I'll cover him. Now you got to be on the same page. Sometimes you can get your signals crossed up, and that's what happens here. They just get their signals crossed up right here. He attacks this outside shoulder just to open this guy, and again, he's attacking his outside shoulder. So what he's doing, when this guy attacks the outside shoulder, outside leverage, it's telling him, this is my man. Well, he sees nothing coming his way, so he's thinking, this is my man. But there's still a concept that if anything comes outside, I might get crossed up. And so he's following his guy. He's following his guy, but then he realizes, oh, wait a minute, this guy's coming out, so let me jump this route. So he jumps it. And so you got uh -huh. two guys going at the same guy and you forget really, because really this guy was open. I almost can't blame him because they've been throwing that flat like crazy. And it just has a, you have a coverage breakdown. 